Welcome to Blind Level Tech. This isn't just accessible tech talk. This is technology on a whole new level. We're showing you just how possible it is to live the life you want. Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to part two of the iOS 18 release notes deep dive. Really hope you guys enjoyed part one of that episode. But like I said, there's so much that has been added to iOS 18 and there are so, there are so many new changes and improvements that we kind of had to split this episode up into a two-parter and that's it's been a while since since we've had to do that. But anyway, I am your host Evan Starnes and I am joined by my co-host Kelvin Crosby. Hey, it's so good to see you, even though I can't see you. It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Evan, how you doing, man? Dude, I actually, I'm doing better this week. Uh, all the stinking, bloody tech issues that I was experiencing last week kind of just majestically cleared up in a way. And like, I'm, I, I've actually had decent luck using like Outlook and other and, and, and Microsoft Office 365 stuff. And I've always, I've had a lot of issues with that. So I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to just see that that's not the case this week. It's behaving nicely. So, no, nah, honestly, I'm I'm doing pretty good. And yeah, how are you, how are you doing, Kelvin? How's your how's your week been treating you? I'm still living me on my challenges. I mean, every day is another day, and we just keep trying to find joy in it. And uh, absolutely, yeah, I, I'm definitely. I will, I will be honest with everybody. I'm in a very tough season, but I, as it, I say every day. At the end of all, all the shows, go live beyond your challenges. And I'm just doing that. Taking one day at a time, rejoicing in that challenge. And That's keep what you got to do, it. man. So, Absolutely. But, but before we dive into part two of the deep dive, it's time for our tech piece of the week. Yeah. So... My tech piece of the week this week, just with all of the the new improvements that have been brought to AirPods and AirPods Pro, is actually my set of AirPods Max. I don't know if I've ever had that as a tech piece before, but I, I, I've got to because those are my daily headphones. I mean, I get home from work, I want to listen to some tunes, and I want it to sound fantastic. Those are my daily headphones. I think those things have gotten cumul cumulatively thousands of hours of use, and I've only had them for like two years. So, seriously, so Apple... the $500... Uh, they are... Mm -hmm, they really are. Like, they're... It really... The experience... The audio experience for a pair of wireless headphones, especially connected to an Apple device... The audio experience is, I, I just, I haven't found anything better than it. Apple, you know how to make a nice pair, a nice sounding pair of wireless headphones. I mean, yes, I think 500 bucks might be a, a little much for those. I think the most I'd spend would be like 350, 400 on them, but uh, it's, it's hard to argue with the, with the sound quality I get out of those darn things, a uh, battery life and stuff. You know, I've, I've, I've seen better headphones, you know, with better battery life and the transparency mode on those is the best I've ever heard from pair of wireless headphones. Like it's when it, when they're in transparency mode, it's like, I'm not even wearing them at all. It's, it's really good. And I mean, needless to say, noise cancellation is also ridiculously good. So yes, my tech piece is the Apple AirPods Max, both the Lightning and USB-C variant. What I'm is your you, tech piece? Well, I got I got a good tech piece, but I'm just glad you brought that up because I've been in the market for new headphones. So, oh really? I, I might have to flirt with that. Well, we'll see if we get married on this or not, but we'll find mm -hmm. out another day, dude. I can convince but. you. I have the power. <laughs> I've got the power. <laughs> anyway, well, you already convinced me on the Android, so I'm not sure I if I want to get convinced on any more high dollar items. Are you sure? But anyway, so my tech piece of the, of the day is the Rode Go Two, and that is a wireless setup for you to uh, do live streaming or video recording and be wireless. So you plug in your Rode Rode Go Two and plug it into your phone to have a, a dongle that you can use for your iPhone if you have an iPhone if you need it for your 
computer. You can plug it in your computer. You can do so much with this little device. Um, they're, they're both like little, I want to say, the size of uh, a $1 coin. Like one of the one dollar coins about that size, and it transmit, and then you get the road go mic. Um, that sounds like a million bucks, so um, yeah, I can't complain. The only downside is it does have a touch screen, so if you need to change your setting, you definitely need to do it on your computer or make sure that you, you got. Your settings locked. Once you have your settings locked, you're pretty set to go. So, but yeah, that's my tech piece of the week. Love wireless mics too. Is it so? It's like a little like a lapel mic or a lavalier that you that's yeah, wireless so that connects to the so receiver. There's two parts. Yeah. So the mic. So you have the you have the mic part that plugs into a box, and then also on the box actually has its own mic. Um, on the road go. Oh, cool. Yeah. So if you actually don't That's need it. And the other thing is it records locally on that, on the road go to mic receiver or mic. Really? Transmitter. Yeah. And it records locally. So if, if the connection fails, you just go grab the recording and then you have the raw recording right there. Oh, you've got a backup, a redundancy, and that's one exactly. of the things you really want when it comes to audio recording. That's, exactly, dude. Exactly. That's sweet. So, I, I've actually almost wondered if I've played with this before because I know Alex, our um, uh, senior programming manager, has um, a really handy little microphone setup that she uses with her cameras, and it has like a little. Um, it just it's like a little teeny box that's about the size of like an airpods case you plug in a microphone into it and then you push a button and it's going but this kind of sounds like an upgrade from that especially if it's smaller and has the ability to connect your device directly no it's two devices well so you have the the mic uh transmitter and then you have the receiver right right and that that box plans and plugs into your device and then you have also, it has an input, so you can hear how high and low your audio. Good, on, a, low, a zero latency output, so you can monitor your yeah. audio and make sure you're not absolutely destroying your microphone. I, oh, I, I that's like almost n- a, a, no, that is totally a necessity, especially if you're a blind or low vision audio engineer and you're, you know, you just want to make a good quality recording. Is the ability to hear what you're recording whilst it's being recorded. I'm so exactly. glad it has that. Absolutely. Well, we'd better dive into part two of the iOS 18 deep dive because we, we've kind of, we've kind of gone on for, it's for a little bit here, but, um, yeah, that that's that's really cool, and I'll have to I'll have to give the the road go to a checkout. But yeah, with that being said, stay tuned for part two. Now they've also added an a new item chooser, and the item chooser with voiceover. I don't really use it a lot, but it's basically a feature that will allow you to basically put the items on a screen into a vertical up and down list and you can also search for things so like let's say i was trying to search for oh let's say i was in the apple watch app and i was trying to search for general to go to the general settings um you know i go into the item chooser search for general and then it would anything any element of the on the screen that had the word general in it would be displayed now with the item chooser and braille screen, uh, well, and, and braille displays, you can now type pretty much any at any point on the screen, as long as you're not in like a text box, you can type text and then hit enter and then it will give you a list of items that it found that, that match what you've typed. It's It's definitely pretty intuitive and it will make it a lot more efficient to navigate around the screen using braille. What, what, what's interesting is there was a new thing that came out on the Braille display, and I'm curious what you think about this, hmm? is how does the rotor interact with the Braille display? Oh, that's an interesting. The rotor does work with the Braille display. You just have to have separate commands to either rotor li- right and rotor left, and then you can actually, you, you'd have to have, a, you have a command for swiping up and down. 
Um, so it, the rotor does work with a braille display. Um, I've, I've had to customize mine a little bit because the, I, I don't remember, depending on your braille display, the commands that you use to adjust the rotor can vary and can be a little bit clunky sometimes. So, but with, with iOS 18, they solved that problem. Oh, is this something I I I haven't seen? I don't think yet. you figured this out yet. <laughs> I don't think I have. Well, do I tell. Think, I think we got to get an update next week, everybody. I I threw a curveball to Evan. Let's get a round of applause on that one, people. I trumped Evan on that you one. Did. <laughs> That's a first. I usually Dude. I'm usually the one throwing curveballs in your direction. So, well, what is this new rotor like um, or rotor functionality that has been added with Braille support? So according to the TikTok lady that she popped up on my TikTok and she she explained that you're the, the way to do a gest, gesture on the on the I, I again I, I, I listened to it in the middle like I was going to bed. So I was just like oh this is sleep good listening news. to it. Yeah. And so there, there's something in regards to the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen that you get to do and it solves all the problems with the rotor. Oh whoa, that's that's Braille screening. I know what you're talking about. Wah wah, your curveball failed, Kelvin. Sorry. Oh, oh man. <laughs> hey, but hey, <laughs> that's actually what we're gonna talk about next though, is actually a lot of the new improvements that have been brought to Braille screen input. They've pretty much uh, not quite rebuilt Braille screen input from the bra- the ground up, but my goodness, they have added some pretty neat little improvements to that. And actually, that one, it, one of that one, the first one being the ability to activate Braille screen input by holding your device and then double tapping with two fingers on the top and bottom edges of the screen. It will immediately activate Braille screen input. Then to stop Braille screen input, you drag two fingers in opposite directions um, and it will basically kick you out of braille screen input and it they've added some cool new little sounds and haptic haptics to signify going in and out of braille screen input i i was really going for that one i thought i got you on that one Nah, <laughs> no. Nah, hey, that that was a good that was a good one. I think I have a feeling you are gonna stump me one day though, and I won't expect it. So, you know, <laughs> that, that's okay. Now, also the 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 item chooser that I had discussed a couple minutes ago with Braille displays also does work in Braille screen input as well. So that that's definitely pretty cool, and they've added a new Braille screen input command mode and that allows you to use braille cords and basically what cords are for those who don't know are their their commands that you enter on a braille display in conjunction with the space bar so for instance um, if i wanted to exit something it's a z chord so that's the letter z in braille with the space bar and um but now they've added that where you can initiate a command mode and to initiate that particular command mode with braille screen input you're going to want to swipe right or left with three fingers and when you're in command mode you'll actually hear a sound that sounds a lot like a braille writer's bell you know you ever use the you ever use the perkins braille writers yep. before and yeah it's that. like a okay, okay, yeah it's like that so it sounds like that and um then you can the, the difference between voiceovers command mode versus you know using a cord on your braille display is that you don't need to um obviously since you can't press space in braille screen input you don't need to actually hold down space while doing these commands but you can hit like dot four or dot one to go forward and back with voiceover and um you know you could hit h in braille to go to your home screen it's really for it's it's cool and um I have I just literally discovered it like half an hour ago and have been kind of playing around with it and um it's definitely something I'll have to get used to but at the same time you know it's it's definitely I feel like it'll make it even more intuitive especially if you I, I if you use BS braille screen input a lot you know it'll it'll just make it a lot more seamless to go um, you know, from using Braille screen input to type and then using mm-hmm. Braille screen input to do voiceover commands. 
Yeah. Well, man, I, I think it's fascinating. And, I, and this is the one area in my life that I, I just have not fully embraced. But it seems like every time the new update, I, I'm just like, why am I not doing this? Right. And they add all these new features. I, I think I'm going to have to start drinking this Kool-Aid to see what's on the other side. The BSI cool. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, BSI is one of those things that once you once you discover its potential and uh, how more efficient it can make you as a voiceover user, especially if you're, you know, if you are really familiar with Braille, um it's it, it's kind of hard to to backtrack, especially if you end up like switching to um, a different device like a an Android device or whatever it might be and um, and there's one there's one other little thing that they've added here with Braille screen input and that is the ability to have it always active so if you want if you use Braille screen input religiously and you um, you don't want it to exit when you open an app or change screens, you can always have it on, and then you can just you know go between input mode and command mode all the time, and pretty much have your phone controlled all by Braille. Which is quite fascinating. Because honestly, by it, if you become a master in the Braille display world, as soon as you fill your back, your phone in your backpack, and you're good to go, and you move on with life. Exactly. Makes it, it really does make it. Um, I, I I love BSI, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all of the the big changes that have been added with Braille screen input. So definitely, if you have used Braille screen input in the past and have just upgraded to iOS 18, go give it a try now with these new gestures, and you'll really you'll see what we're talking about here. It's it's pretty sweet. Um, I love the new sounds too. That they they've finally made it so that when you're typing, you get like haptic and sound feedback, and it just it just feels so much more tactile. And um, I might actually start using BSI more. Now um, let's kind of shy away from voiceover and braille and all of that and just talk about a couple of little like miscellaneous changes that have been added to iOS and watchOS that have just they're kind of underrated and you know they're not talked about a bunch and the biggest one for me with watchOS being an, um, a longtime Apple Watch user you for the since the Apple Watch's inception, you've been able to change the watch face, the bands, the home screen, you know, all the the visual aspects of it, but have never ever been able to really change how your Apple Watch sounds. Until now, you finally have the ability to uh, to change your ringtone, text tone, mail sound, all of it. You finally now have custom tones on the Apple Watch, and that is huge. I think that, I think that's going to be a handy dandy tool when you're playing Marco Polo with your phone. But like, you can have it when you say Marco, it can say Polo back. Maybe, maybe. I think that'd be amazing. Oh, that would be hilarious, right? I mean, how, how often do we as blind individuals play Marco Polo with ourselves? I mean, I said that. To, I said, We're <laughs> doing it when you're at the hike, man. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Well, well, the other thing is, I I dropped my soap yes in the shower, and I and I said Marco, and it didn't say nothing back, and I had to go find it. I was like, you know, if the soap could say Polo back, that would be amazing. Absolutely. So, could we find our phone when you do the find your phone feature on the, on the watch? It goes ding 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 ding. ding it makes a little ding, chime ding, ding. sound. Yeah, like a chime, and it, and, it, and if you just say. And, 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 and your phone, your watch says Marco, and then the phone said Polo. I mean, that'd be amazing. That'd be pretty funny, yeah. wouldn't it? Right? And, and especially if you're in a room and you want to just play a joke on people, and and and, and you just say, and you hit Marco, and nobody says Polo back, and you, but your phone. At least does. my phone will say it for me, and I won't feel as awkward. Exactly. Exactly. And um, also with the Apple Watch, and unfortunately, this is exclusive to the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Series 10 and later. But at the same time, they finally made it so you can play music and audio through your Apple Watch's built-in speaker. And 
I don't know why they didn't why they didn't bring this to the Apple Watch Ultra and the Series 9 and earlier because the speakers on those have always been pretty good. But it's kind of nice, like if you don't want to put in earbuds or headphones um, and you don't want and your phone's charging, but you just want some a little thing to listen to a podcast on, you'll finally be able to play audio on your watch's speaker and it sounds pretty good not gonna lie um i've heard demos of it and um it gets pretty loud and it's just a, it's a nice option to have for sure now the the last improvements kelvin you're gonna love these um these really pertain to airpods and um m- most particularly airpods pro second generation they've really done given those things a lot of love in ios 18 here uh but one of the coolest new features with all airpods now is the ability to nod or shake your head when to accept or reject a call or respond to notifications oh brother Right? See, see, okay. As blind individuals, this is a dangerous thing for us. Yeah. We have blindisms. Straight up. You know, whoa. You know, you you're know, right. They, I mean, we have the, and especially if we're rockers, like I can tend to be a rocker sometimes and, and I forget that I'm rocking. And then, how, like, that gesture gonna make that, hang up that phone call. I'm like, whoops. Well, nope, not, not for you today. <laughs> Well, the good thing is, is that's only that that gesture is only going to be active when Siri is reading out a notification or while your phone is ringing. So if you're like actually on a call, you won't just be able to shake your head and have it end the call. Fortunately, okay. But it, well, I mean, it could accidentally how legit, happen. How would like you're so mad? Mm-mm. Oh uh, yeah, dude. Oh. Actually, I didn't even think about that. Like somebody, <laughs> I, I'm already like. When it comes to phone calls, I'm already pretty bad at, at just random phone calls. I'm like, oh my god, somebody's calling me and I'm not in the mood to talk. And sometimes I get mad and shake my head. But oops, I didn't mean to in- immediately reject them. I don't want it to look like I, wa- I don't want to talk to them. <laughs> no, well, man. So let me talk about the hearing aids real fast. The yeah, that's a new feature too. I- Apple AirPods. If you're going to use them as hearing aid and you have a severe hearing loss, it's garbage. Just straight up. Wait, you got to you play with to go- it? No, but I've already I've watched enough reviews. Ah. Uh, um. So um. Okay. So if if you have like a hearing loss like I do, a severe or a se- severe severe hearing loss, it isn't gonna work. Oh. Two is this isn't for like like um if you were to put AirPods on your grandpa. You he might be able to hear better, but more likely that hearing test isn't sufficient enough to really get you your levels. So again, this is this is called the over the counter hearing aids, and so they they legally can't go past a certain decibel and provide oh, you certain hearing from a legal standpoint. So if you just need some application in your audio, yeah, they will work. But if you're like me with a severe hearing loss, you got custom tubes, you got um, high level audio input, output, all that stuff going on, and you're doing a lot of different things with your hearing aid, this isn't. Mm. So if you are deaf blind or if you're new to the deaf blind community, you can try this out. Um, but you're better off going to get prescription hearing aids because they're going to be a lot more powerful and a lot more better. Yeah. Um, yes. Pl- plus pricey, the mics but... on the AirPods only have a very specific frequency range that they can hear. And it's kind of limited. Yep. So yeah. that's something to really chew on. I mean, I would say definitely take a look at it. But try, I, I personally, I'm not going to. I probably will never get AirPods to work well enough for my, my hearing loss. Um, and so that's why they say you can play around with it, but I would not invest the money if you really need hearing aids. Yeah, that's unfortunate too, because hearing aids are expensive. And so I was kind of hoping this would be a a good supplement for those, but, um, I haven't played with it yet. It's not, I don't think it's available with 18.0. I think, um, I'm pretty, I, I do believe the feature is in beta and will be available probably within the next like month or so. But 
Um, it sounds like the people that have played with it just haven't had as good of an experience, though. That's a that's a bummer. Yeah. Well, like I listen, I the people I follow on YouTube, they're hearing aid experts, and and then also my all all just that I see. She, I talked to her about it, and she's like, Kelvin, it's just never gonna get to the level that you need. Man, if you don't really know your hearing levels, you could really do some serious damage. Ooh. And that's why they, they can only go as far as they can go because uh, over the counter because that way they're not held liable for providing you over the counter. It's the same thing with medication, right? They're going to give you enough medication over the counter that it, it's not going to kill you. But if you want a, like a more heavier dose of it, you're going to have to go get it. Like a prescription of it. Prescription of it. Um, like kind of what playing around with this whole over-the-counter hearing aid thing. And honestly, this is over-the-counter hearing aid thing is a new thing. It's not something that's as common. It only came into law uh, about th- three years ago, I think. Yeah, Maybe that's what I remember. Awesome. It was it was huge oh. when it came out, though, and it made it. Well, it did make hearing aids that cost like thousands and thousands of dollars a lot more obtainable and reachable for for those who are just you know who are just losing their hearing but having trouble trying to acquire a prescription for hearing aids. Yep. I, I will be testing that out once it becomes available, and I'll, I'll share my personal thoughts. Now, I don't have any hearing loss or any of that, but it, it would be interesting to at least see if it maybe makes it possible to keep your AirPods in when you're trying to listen for things like an Uber approaching or mm-hmm. people around you, because that's always been the issue I've had with AirPods Pro is the the transparency mode when I'm using it, it muffles a lot of the kind of higher frequencies that I hear and it makes everything kind of sound like you're listening through marshmallows. And um, as somebody who relies on my echolocation too much. Hold on. You're putting marshmallows in your ears? Well, how would you know what it's like to have marshmallows in your... Hold on, Evan. Everybody got to have an understanding of this. What it's like to have a marshmallow in your ear? Have you put a cotton ball in your ear? That, that that's it's like that. It's like ball. putting a cotton but ball. But it's in your not. Head. But you're. You, but you said marshmallow. Yeah. I just want everybody to understand. We all heard him say marshmallow. I said marshmallow because so I'm hungry. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but a well, marshmallow think... or a cotton ball is what it sounds like, and so that's why. But maybe you know, maybe this will make the transparency mode at least a little bit more usable. Now, um, there's one other feature that I actually have been playing around with this week, and um, I actually needed to kind of debunk a, a misleading um, something that was misleading in the release notes for iOS 18. Um, they've added a new feature for music called Music Haptics, and this one's interesting because Apparently, it will allow you to experience new new music in kind of a more immersive way, and it will the basically the taptic engine in your phone, the the vibration motor in simple terms, will vibrate along with the beat of your music, kind of like the the ringtone improvement that we were talking about mm. at the beginning of this episode. Now, have you played around with that much, or what? Are your no, What are your thoughts on it? Well, I haven't done the update because I haven't got got the verification that. The hearing aids work. Oh, um, that's a good point. With the because uh, I'll never forget when uh, iOS 15, all the hearing aids crashed, that's it. and uh-huh. so I always wait until the third update before I do the updates on my phone. Absolutely. So that way my hearing aids survive. <laughs> yeah, seven thousand dollars down the drain. You know, <laughs> you don't want that. No, that's mm-hmm. kind of crucial if they make it so that you can't use like, like that would be bad. Like if. They if an iOS update broke like switch control for somebody too like that's 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 no bueno so I I can see why you'd be yeah. waiting on that on that update. Yeah, I, I'm normally a sitter. I'm not a I'm not a go 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 getter. I'd love to I, I stay up to date, but when I actually apply, it, I'm normally about six months later. Right on. Now the music haptics feature. Now, with what's strange here with the iOS release notes is that they say that this feature is only available on iPhone 14 and later. But I actually did get it to work on my iPhone 13 Pro, and I think that's just because my iPhone 13 Pro has the exact same chip that the iPhone 14 has. And 
Maybe that means that it'll actually work on the 13 later, and maybe that means that they might need to kind of revise that release note a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it is it is interesting. I I tried it with that with the song "Lovely Day" by Bill Withers, and it was actually that was the best results that I've gotten out of it. But you could feel like the the drum beats, and then at the end of that song, when he when he holds that high E. It, it does like the the taptic engine was translating that into this just long like continuous vibration and it sounded really funny but it so we should do a test we definitely with, should and, and and see if I can sing it by with that vibration because here's the thing did you know interesting fact about me is that I don't know how to sing because I can't hear my own voice I don't know how to sing and, because I choose not to. <laughs> but I did sing one song. And the way I sung that song was through haptics. What? Oh, that's interesting. Yep. So I put my hands on the piano. You pulled and a Beethoven, pra- didn't you? I sure did. That's cool, my, man. That's cool. So I put my hands on the piano. My instructor would hit the piano keys, and I was able to sing the song in tune. And um, it's and this would be interesting is could I take current day songs and then feel the vibration and maybe possibly be able to sing and be like, oops, I did it again. Oh, watch ba, out. Ba, Copyright. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll be fine. <laughs> that would be interesting, actually. And that's funny because that's I was trying to find some songs to try this out with that had like a lot of percussive elements in in them and that weren't mm-hmm. like drown in melody. And that actually um, that's that particular song. It does have a lot of percussive elements. So I'm going to have to try that that feature out. Now, before we wrap up this episode, there is one burning question that I'm sure a lot of you guys are asking. Should I update? And honestly, when it comes to iOS 18 releases, uh, this this release, believe it or not, actually doesn't have as many serious or even pesky voiceover issues as other iOS releases. So honestly, if you... If you're not dependent on other um, on things like switches, hearing aids, or um, you know, if you if you're solely just a voiceover user, give it a try. I've been using it for a few days, and it's honestly been pretty pretty darn reliable. And um, and he's still alive. He's still, I'm alive, still alive. Everybody, my phone is still working. I'm not frustrated, and I don't want to throw it through a window. So, <laughs> no, I, I would definitely say. It, it, it's not. It, it is pretty. It, it's a pretty solid experience. I'm glad to see that they've they've fixed that. Um, they, they've kind of addressed a lot of those annoying bugs. If you want to actually really find out about the the bugs and issues and workarounds with iOS 18 and Voiceover, you actually can check that out on the newly revived Apple Viz website. And I don't know why we saved this for the end of the episode, but. Um, I just need to say this right now. There is actually a a, um, a point that you and, and I had kind of discussed a while a, a while ago. It was actually on the um, it was on the unmute episode, and um, you know during that episode we were kind of just saying like, oh man, Apple Viz is going away and it's it's no longer a thing. But nope, for those who've been potentially under a rock, it's actually been acqu- acquired by um be my eyes and um i was just on it earlier today and it's back and it's the it's the apple viz that you know and love but it seems to have def- definitely undergone some a little bit of um kind of groundwork there so um I'm, I'm glad to see that apple viz is back and up and running again as it was a huge resource for not only me but a lot of other uh individuals that use apple products in the blind and low vision communities i'm getting hungry evan me too i'm man. getting hungry man this tummy getting hungry man my stomach's been growling all uh, this well a little bit during this episode and i think because i'm hungry and because you're hungry and because we've gone on and on and on it's about time for the sandwich of the week and honestly um, so I actually am, I do not, believe it or not, have, well, actually, this isn't, this is totally the norm now. 
I am I don't have a sandwich of the week this week yet. So whilst I'm very quickly improvising something, uh, do you have a sandwich of the week, Kelvin? I'm going to be a jerk and put you in the hot seat again. <laughs> well, my sandwich of the week is, and by the day, I don't, I don't know if people knew, but September 18th is uh, Hamburger Day, what? Well, Cheeseburger Day. By the way, uh, that's the day we're recording this podcast. Oh, you're right. But, yeah. Um, but uh, the other so, but I'm not doing a hamburger. But I'm doing an actually a burrito because isn't a burrito kind of like a sandwich? Just, uh, just, just, just no, not really. But eh, eh, mm. you eat it like a sandwich. I'll let it. I'll let I, it slide. I'll let it slide for this episode. Right. What's your What's your burrito? <laughs> I'm doing a California burrito uh, oh, from Sombreros. Sombreros. Food place. Yeah, they got a good kind of sada. They get french fries. You get cheese. And that's what I leave it at. But you can also get guacamole, sour cream, and pico de gallo in there as well. But, uh, yeah, so that is my sandwich pick of the week. What is yours, Evan? Well, since I completely forgot that today is National uh, Cheeseburger Day, pretty much, I'm actually going to go and revisit a delicious burger that I've had long ago at a place called Old Town Tavern in Old Town Littleton. And that burger is my favorite. It's the Juicy Lucy. It's this big double hamburger with or double cheeseburger with blue cheese crumble, uh, onions, pickles. I think it comes with tomatoes that I always take off because I don't like them. Lettuce and it's it's it, it's juicy. It's not Lucy though, uh, unless it falls apart on you, then it is. <laughs> but it is a delicious burger. And if you are in the Colorado area, and particularly near Littleton, and have not visited Old Town Tavern, go do that. Like stop listening to this episode and go do that right now, <laughs> because you are missing out on some delicious food. In my opinion. Now, before we wrap up this episode, um, Kelvin, do you have any kind of closing thoughts or any um, anything that has stood out to you from today's big release note deep dive? Well, I think what's interesting about the updates that are that are here and still coming is that what's amazing is that we're getting more and more access. And I think we need to be celebrating the fact that we're getting more and more access because we've been fighting for so many years to have access to the internet, the phone, devices, products, and Apple just continues to come and blow it out of the water for most of us and really give us the opportunity to have access. So I just want to give kudos to Apple for really being there for us as visually impaired individuals to give us that opportunity. And not even that, but just deaf blind individuals or deaf mm -hmm. or even, you know, deaf or hard of hearing, any of that. Um, the the features that they've implemented have really it, I, I get the impression that they've done a lot of their research and that they've, you know, gone and actually, you know, gotten input from individuals, you know, with who are deaf, hard of hearing, blind, low vision have you know motor um motor impairments whatever it might be and they've really just tailored these features to work super in seamlessly with you know with with to meet your needs and i i i have to agree with you there so um that's not to say that we're missing stuff on android um you know android's got its own you know slew slew of accessibility features and improvements but um really apple just the 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 way that they innovate with things like music haptics and uh and the the new braille screen input commands really just impresses me you know i always am like man what what more can you guys bring to the to the table and they always seem to impress me for sure so we're going to wrap up our show here but first thing that we need to know is we want to hear back from you we want you to call us or text us or email us. So where do we do that, Evan? Yeah, you want to do that at feedback at aftersight.org or 
five, six. Good Lord. And we'd love to know what specific enhancements and changes that you've seen while using your iOS or Apple device, because we're, we're curious here on Blind Level Tech, on Blind Level Tech, and we definitely love hearing your feedback. So yes, definitely please send us any feedback, questions, or comments that you might have and we will be sure to address those in whatever way we can. With that being said, I am your host, Evan Starnes. I'm going to go eat right now. And yeah, this is my co-host, Kelvin Crosby. Go live beyond your challenges and plug in your device. Mm-hmm.